Whichever way you look at it, north, south, east or west, China, the powerhouse, is changing the world economies. This giant of a country is now the second largest economy in the world. I'm going to take you on a voyage of the Brand Z Top 50 Most Valuable Chinese Brands. Join me on this remarkable journey. Our countdown begins at number 50, and dropping but still securing their place in the top 50 this year is the innovative sportswear manufacturer and retailer 361. One of China's fastest growing sportswear companies, adding between 600 and 800 stores per year, 361 is a vertically integrated business from design, manufacturing through to retailing. Chinese consumers, especially the young consumers, see 361 as a brand that offers them a distinctive style, quality and innovation. The company sells its merchandise through a network of roughly 30 exclusive distributors who sell to 3,500 dealers that operate more than 7,000 shops nationwide. To communicate the brand at retail, the company's developing a flagship prototype called 361 Degrees Town. Although having avoided high-profile sports sponsorship, 361 has recently increased its profile by sponsoring the China Curling Winter Olympics team in 2009 and the Asian Games in 2010. It also provides sporting apparel for many of China's national teams. 361 was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2009. The first of the six new entrants into this year's rankings is one of the leading internet portal search and messaging services. In at number 49 is Sohu. Zohu.com is a leading internet portal for news, sport, information and business. It also has an email service and an SMS messaging service. The company also owns and operates related internet sites for an alumni network, for real estate and for ringtones. Gaming, entertainment and messaging drives revenue from consumers. Most of the gaming revenue comes from the company's majority owned subsidiary, Chang Yu, a leading developer of online games. Its best-known game, 
Tang Long Ba Bu combines martial arts themes with aspects of games based around community building. Zohu generates its revenues from both businesses and consumers. The majority of its business revenue comes from the selling of search terms and advertising. Zohu was founded in 1996 and IPO'd in 2000. Having had a difficult year and falling 29 places from last year's ranking of 19 is the car manufacturer and electric car manufacturer, BYD. BYD are well positioned to take full advantage of the sensational growth now being seen in the China auto industry with cars like these. But it's also in electric technology that BYD has got its sights set on. BYD was the first producer of an all-electric car in China and its technology is something that has sparked an interest in the Sage of Omaha. Warren Buffett has spent about 230 million US dollars buying a 9% stake in BYD. BYD formed a partnership with Germany's Daimler in 2010 and it's organising its export programme, especially to North America, where it could introduce its plug-in hybrid. The company was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2002, and the shifts to cars began in 2003 with the acquisition of Xi'an Ching Chen Auto Company and Beijing Jiqi Auto Mold Company. In 2008, BYD acquired Ningbo Zongwei, a semiconductor manufacturer. BYD has since built four manufacturing facilities in Xi'an, Beijing, Shenzhen and Shanghai. The capacity enables the company to serve domestic consumer demand and pursue commercial opportunities. In 2010, it began supplying Shenzhen with a limited number of taxis. The first time 100% electric vehicles were put into the taxi market in large quantities worldwide. Well, BYD have had its fair share of technology issues over the last 12 months, which goes to prove that the road to electric cars, even here in China, is not going to be a smooth one, Warren. Ranked 49th in last year's listing and now rising to 47, following a brand increase of 138%, is popular cooking oil producer Fullinman. Fullinman is a producer of edible oils and has differentiated its brand from its competitors by emphasising the health and safety of its products. This is of particular concern to Chinese consumers, especially amongst the younger generation who are much more health conscious. Recent product introductions reflect this positioning. Fullerman introduced a new generation of corn oil in 2011, sourced from the world's second largest gold corn belt in northeastern China. The product is advertised as rich in key nutrients. Fullerman's advertising reinforces the point, creating a personality for the Fullerman brand that suggests the protective attitude a concerned and wise mother would have for her family. Fullerman has also conducted a whole series of events emphasising its health and safety with factory tours and community programmes. 
And it's this consistent message across multi-channels which is one of the reasons that Fullerman has enjoyed continued sales success. Fullerman is owned by Kofco, one of China's largest food producing groups. Entering the rankings for the very first time, following their route expansion and great customer service emphasis, at 46 is Hainan Airlines. Hainan is one of China's leading airlines, with 500 flights a week to about 100 destinations in Europe, Africa, Asia and the Middle East, and as of 2011, Australia. Its most busy routes are those from Beijing to many cities in Russia. During 2011, Hainan also added Zurich and Istanbul to its European destinations, which include Budapest, Brussels and Berlin. It operates a fleet of around 100 planes. Hainan flies from cities throughout China, but Beijing in the north and Haikou on the island's province of Hainan in the South China Sea are the primary operation centres. Hainan Airlines attempts to differentiate the brand with an emphasis on customer service and received a five-star rating from the airline review site Skytrax. Hainan Airlines is part of the HNA Group, a conglomerate which has interests in tourism, retail and industry. It was listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 1997 and it's still majority owned by the Hainan Provincial Government. Another new entrant at 45 is apparel designer, manufacturer and retailer Setwolves. Setwolves is a manufacturer and retailer of principally men's fashion and business clothing, although it does do some women's and children's as well, with a manufacturing team of about 3,000 and a design team of about 50. They manufacture and design their own labels, but also for retailers' exclusive brands. Under the Setwolves label, the company designs garments that integrate and fuse international and Chinese styles. The company divides its businesses into segments, international design, business, leisure, jeans, women's wear and children's wear. It operates or franchises over 3,500 stores, including a flagship outlet in Jarmaine on the southeast coast. Setwolves sponsors major sporting activities in order to associate the brand with characteristics like teamwork and passion. They provided all the clothing for Real Madrid soccer team when they toured China recently. Setwolves was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange in 2004. Down seven places from last year's 37 is the pharmaceutical brand CR Sanjo. San Jojo Pharmaceuticals produces over-the-counter medicines, Chinese remedies and prescription drugs like antibiotics. It's best known for China's biggest selling cold remedy, 999 Gaomoling. The group oversees the distribution of the 999 brand worldwide through another subsidiary. Although pharmaceuticals is the core business of China Resource, Shanju Medical and Pharmaceutical Company Limited, the company also is engaged in printing, food processing and real estate development. 
when Shanzhou experienced problems resulting from over-diversification and excessive debt several years ago, it received an investment infusion from China Resources, the diversified conglomerate which holds a large interest. The company is controlled by San Jojo Enterprises, a state-owned company. Further consolidating its status as one of China's favourite dairy brands is Bright, which following a brand rise of 2% is placed this year at 43. Bright is one of China's leading dairy producers and has become a well-known household name right across China in a very short space of time. And its brand is synonymous with great product innovation. Bright became a public company in 2002. The brand continues to differentiate by emphasizing high standards for food freshness and safety. It achieves these standards by sourcing from local pastures and by investing in new technology. The company also owns a large research and development center and the brand is highly regarded for introducing innovative new products. During the 2008 China milk scandal, Bright's decisive response and quick apology, which was markedly different from some of its rivals, enabled the company to recover relatively quickly and lessen the impact on its sales and brand equity. The successful Bright brand is known for the quality of its products, which are sterilised at low temperature. Dropping six places to 42 and with a reduction in brand value of 23% is Yanjing Beer. Yanjing is attempting to grow in a highly competitive market by developing beer consumption in China abroad and by entering new product sectors. It's increased its marketing expenditure in order to help position itself as a green brand to take advantage of health and wellness benefits as it gets its water from traditional mountain springs in northern China. Differentiation is especially important in the consolidated Chinese beer industry where, following a recent period of mergers and acquisitions, the top five brands control almost three quarters of the market. Strength is often regional, reflecting brand origins. Yang Jing is particularly strong in Beijing where it was established. Prior to the 15th century, in fact, Beijing was called Ying Jing. The brand is also strong in Guangxi Hunan and Inner Mongolia. To further strengthen its position in Inner Mongolia, Yang Jing is planning to acquire a local brand called Jing Chuan. In part because of the beer category's traditionally low margins in China, Yang Jing is leveraging its national prominence to stretch the brand beyond beer into non-alcoholic beverages and food. Yang Jing currently operates 21 breweries in China and it manufactures 5 billion litres of beer each year. It was the official beer sponsor for the 2008 Beijing Olympics and is the only beer to be served in the Great Hall of the People in Tiananmen Square in Beijing. Well, if it's good enough for them. At 41 in the list is the sportswear manufacturer Anta, which following a growth of 35% in brand value, climbs 
two places. Anta is one of China's leading sportswear enterprises. It designs, it manufactures and it markets a range of sports footwear, clothing and accessories. It has a presence right across China in all of the provinces and has 7,500 retail outlets. The company manages a portfolio of products designed for Chinese consumers who enjoy increasing disposable income and are willing to buy domestically. And to markets with a combination of traditional advertising, event sponsorship, endorsements by accomplished athletes and social media. It also emphasises the appeal of its stores and strives for brand consistency among its distributors and franchisees. The company focuses its marketing investment on basketball, tennis and running. In 2010, it launched the Road to Glory, intercity tours of Beijing, Harbin, Shanghai, Nanjing and Guangzhou to promote basketball. During the tour, NBA star Louis Scola coached young players on basketball skills. And to sports added basketball superstar Kevin Garnett as a spokesperson in late 2010. Tennis player Jelena Jankovic also endorses the brand. Anta maintains a partnership with the China Olympic Committee and is the official uniform supplier for Olympic events through to 2012. The extensive competition in China's sportswear market drives brand building and Anta spends a considerable amount of time, effort and resource on sports marketing. Anta was founded in the Fujian province in southeast China in 1994 and was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2007. Travel management and booking company Ctrip is another new addition to this year's list, straight in at number 40. Before 1999, all of these passengers here would have bought their airline tickets and railway tickets the traditional way. But that was before Ctrip was founded. Ctrip is China's leading multi-channel travel agency with a call centre of more than 12,000 staff and facilities around China to cater for the exploding Chinese middle class who are travelling inside China and overseas. The company was listed on the Nasdaq exchange in 2003. It books over 30 million air tickets annually, representing more than 50% of the online travel market share in China. In 2010, Ctrip launched Ctrip Wireless, a mobile phone website offering an express e-ticket service. It also launched Looping.com, a social networking site which enables members to share travel tips, photos, destinations and reviews. It entered a strategic alliance with Dining Secretary Limited, a free service that arranged hotel reservations. In the same position as last year, at 39, is Snow Beer. Snow Beer is China's biggest selling beer, but it's unknown outside of China. It's produced through a joint venture between China Resources Brewing Company and SAB Miller, 
one of the largest brewing marketeers in the world. Since 2005, it's had a marketing campaign called Globe Trekker, which associates the brand with adventure and a tremendous spirit of exploration. Currently, CR Snow produces snow and 30 local brands from more than 70 breweries it operates in China. Snow continued its single-minded focus on China with the acquisition of Hainan Oak Beer Industry Company Limited in 2011. The deal quickly followed Snow's 2010 purchase of Hainan Zormadien Yurchan Beer, these transactions strengthen the brand's presence in Hainan province in China's central plains. China Resources Enterprises Limited is listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and like other brewing companies also operates in the food and retail sector. In 2010, Snowbeer's total sales in China reached a staggering 8.42 billion litres. So, Grace, another few litres can't hurt. Thank you. Come back, Grace. Rising 42% in brand value is Washa Bank and maintaining its place at number 38. Huashong Bank is a medium-sized commercial bank in China with around 300 branches around China. It provides essential banking services, including loans. The bank is also involved in other financial activities, such as foreign exchange trading. It works with almost 1,300 correspondent banks worldwide, and it offers insurance products. The bank's engaged in several initiatives to help sustain a high level of customer service. Huaosha, whose traditional name means China, was established as a state bank in 1992 and was listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 2003. Its shareholders include the state-owned power company and Deutsche Bank. Reflecting a difficult year and down 13 places is sportswear manufacturer and retailer Li Ning. Li Ning, the sportswear brand, is named after its founder, Li Ning, the famous Chinese Olympian, who rose to fame during the 1984 Summer Olympic Games. Using Li Ning's fame and his tremendous personality, Li Ning founded a sportswear company, which now has a presence right across China, with more than 7,000 stores. Of course, it's not just China that Li Ning's got its sights set firmly on. International development is firmly on the agenda and Leaning already has an outlet in the USA. Intending to aggressively expand overseas, Leaning in 2011 signed a long-term deal with the Finnish L Fashion Group to establish the brand throughout much of Europe. Li Ning already is present in the US. Meanwhile, Li Ning, which derives more than 90% of its revenue in China, is attempting to sustain its bond with traditional customers, whilst increasing the brand's appeal to younger people. They don't experience the burst of national pride their parents feel remembering Li Ning's performance in the first Olympic Games, in which China competed. Leaning launched an urban sportswear fashion line in 2010 and the brand signed American basketball star Evan Turner and Asafa Powell, the Jamaican sprinter, as spokespersons. Powell had previously represented Nike. Aside from its interest in basketball, Leaning developed its presence in badminton, a hugely popular sport in China. 
It sponsors the Chinese national badminton team and in 2009, Leaning acquired Kaysen, a specialist badminton equipment manufacturer. The badminton positioning is expected to help Leaning expand into other Asian markets. The company was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2004. In order to help rejuvenate the brand, Leaning's recently changed its end line from anything's possible to make the change. Of course, most Chinese people will recognize Leaning as the person who audaciously lit the Olympic flame. Thank you very much. Well, I've invested in a pair of Leanings. London Olympics 2012, here I come. Increasing brand value by 89% and rising five places from 41 is Tong Reng Tang, the herbal remedy provider. Tong Reng Tang was established in the eighth year of the Chinese emperor's reign, Kan Chi, at the beginning of the Qing dynasty in 1669. Today, it combines its 340 years of experience of retailing and manufacturing traditional Chinese medicine with more contemporary techniques. For many Chinese consumers, the long heritage of Tong Reng Tang has made the brand synonymous with traditional herbal remedies. But success has its problems and the use of the Tong Reng Tang brand name across a wide range of products potentially dilutes its powers. Today, it operates 800 stores in China and sells its products worldwide through distributors and alliances. First time seen in the rankings at number 35 is Zhenzhen, the fastest growing social network site that's been called the Facebook of China. Zhenzhen is one of China's leading social networking sites. It was established in 2005 under a different name, Xiaoning, in order to appeal to the new generation of modern younger students at elite universities and colleges. It now has 124 million users and offers them entertainment, social networking, social commerce and business-to-business -business social commerce. Online advertising, fees from merchants and other services such as online games generate revenue. Similar to Facebook, it was aimed at students at elite colleges. An internet operation called Oak Pacific Interactive acquired the company in 2006, and in 2009, the name became Zhenzhen. Zhenzhen, whose Chinese name means everybody, has been differentiating itself from its competitors by becoming a name site, which means that every single user can be identified. And this has made it very attractive to marketeers, especially as its user base, already large, is growing. In 2011, it IPO'd on the New York Stock Exchange. With an increase of brand value of 29%, Qingdao has risen from 35 to 34. Qingdao is China's oldest beer, having been established some 100 years ago by British and German brewers. Scale is very important in the beer market, not just because of the size of the country, but also because of the difficulties of differentiating beer brands, because principally they use pretty much the same technology. Qingdao has two main differentiators. The first is its access to the Laoshan Springs in Shandong province, where the brand originates. And the second, of course, is its heritage. 
笑了，吓死了。然后回来，对，然后回来吃的，吃的盘子里面。Part of the challenge for Qingdao and its competitors is to increase domestic beer consumption. Although China is the world's largest market for alcoholic beverages, per capita beer consumption lags the U.S. and many European countries. As well as emphasising its heritage, Qingdao also markets to a new, more youthful consumer and does quite a lot of sponsorship. It's also looking to extend the brand outside of China and has recently launched Qingdao in India. Qingdao Breweries was launched on the Hong Kong and Shanghai Stock Exchange in 1993. So let's try some of that Laoshan Spring. Gambe. Climbing One Place is the largest privately owned consumer electronics retailer, Gome. Gome is one of China's leading electronics retailers and sells everything from fridges to televisions to computers. Its footprint is quite large; has about a thousand, a thousand plus stores, and those stores are about thirty-five thousand square feet. It's trying to differentiate itself. In terms of its competitors, around range, price, and service, and segment some of its stores to different types of consumers. It's also making an aggressive play in the lower tiers, where consumer electronics are beginning to become much more important. Included in the store totals are about a hundred flagship outlets aimed at wealthier consumers. In addition, the organisation operates another roughly 500 stores not under the Gome brand name. Working with strategic partner suppliers, Gome intends to introduce more exclusive products into its assortment. It also plans to expand the product range overall, particularly with higher margin items. Gomei was formed in 1987 and was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2004. A series of acquisitions led to steady growth until 2008, when the chairman at the time was accused of insider trading and financial crimes. A period of disruption followed, but the company now seems to be back on track and in growth mode. In at 32 is Shang Wei, one of China's largest meat food processing companies. Shang Wei is one of China's leading meat processors. It operates factories and facilities right across China and Asia. It sells its products, including fresh and frozen beef, right across the world. Heinan Shuanghui Investment and Development Company Limited was established in 1998 and listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. Goldman Sachs acquired the company in 2007. It is a subsidiary of Shuanghui Group, which was founded in 1958 and originally operated as a cold storage warehouse, entering the meat packing business in 1969. The brand was negatively impacted when a subsidiary was involved in a food safety scandal about unsafe chemical additives in early 2011. Quality meat used to be a luxury in China, something reserved for Chinese New Year. But today, with the growth of China and the growth of the middle classes, meat has become an important part of mainstream diet.
With a brand increase of 3% is home appliance manufacturer Meidi, in at 31. Medi is a manufacturer of a whole range of domestic appliances. It's part of the Medi Holding Company, a conglomerate which has interests in logistics and real estate. It uses its brand right across its range from fridges, cookers, small domestic appliances and an extensive range of microwaves. With 15 production facilities throughout China, Medea opened its first overseas manufacturing site in Vietnam in 2007 and acquired an interest in a facility in Egypt. The company's sales presence in China includes 10,000 shops that exclusively sell Medea branded products. Medea also operates sales offices in the US, Germany, Japan, Hong Kong, South Korea and Russia. In 2010, Medea integrated its air conditioning and appliance businesses to gain efficiencies and strengthen the brand and to more effectively communicate its core message that the company's products and services makes the lives of consumers more comfortable and easier. The company increased its marketing investment, focusing especially on TV and on partnerships with FINA, the International Association for aquatic sports. Medea has also publicised its commitment to environmental responsibility by striving to make these greener events. The Medi business started in 1986, not in the electrical market, but as a producer of plastic bottle tops. Its first electrical product was a fan manufactured in 1980. Today, the company is listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Up one place to 30 this year is China's leading casual apparel retailer, Meta's Bonwe. Metas Bonwe is both a retailer and wholesaler of apparel. It retails under two faces, the Metas Bonwe brand and Me and City. Metas Bonwe is aimed at the younger, fashion-forward consumer, and Me and City is aimed at the more urban customer looking for a more sophisticated feel. Meta's Bonwe's association with Transformers, which includes product placement in the movie series and licensing the Transformers brand for their apparel lines, has been hugely popular. The company was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange in 2008. Metas Bonwe retails from about 3,500 units, many of its own and also franchisees. Of course, like most retailers in the apparel sector, they're facing tremendous pressure from the new generation of fast fashion retailers and, of course, online sales. With brand value growth at 27%, higher is 29 in this year's rankings. Haya is China's leading domestic appliance manufacturer and is best known for its ranges of washing machines, tumble dryers, fridges and air conditioning units. It also manufactures a range of televisions and other consumer electronics products. The Haya brand is available in more than 100 countries worldwide. To be seen as a local brand, Hire designs for national and regional tastes and operates manufacturing and sales facilities worldwide, including more than 30 factories and research and development centres in the US, Germany, Japan and Korea. The company significantly advanced its international expansion strategy in 2011 with the acquisition of large and small appliance businesses from Sanyo, the Japanese manufacturer in Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, 
the Philippines and Vietnam. Haya has grown through acquisition before, especially during the mid-1990s, when it purchased its Chinese competitor, Red Star Electric Appliance Factory, and then Hongshang Electronics Group, a television manufacturer. The company promotes its presence in key markets with a multimedia range of advertising and marketing that includes traditional and social media, as well as strategic partnerships with organisations such as the NBA in the US. It was a sponsor of the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and the 2010 World Expo in Shanghai. Established as Qingdao Refrigerator Company in 1984, in the coastal city of Qingdao. Hai was the successor to an old factory that since 1949 had been run as a state enterprise. The company was renamed and transformed into a modern technology leader by managing director Chang Rei Ming, with guidance from German partner Lieber, a refrigeration specialist. Hai is traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Haya is on a small list of Chinese brands who have leading market shares in markets outside of China. Asia's largest airline in terms of fleet size, China Southern, is ranked seven places lower this year at 28. China Southern is one of China's three leading airlines and has around 150 domestic routes and 30 international ones, principally in the Asia-Pacific region. China Southern Airlines is the cornerstone of the China Southern Air Holding Company, which was formed through the merger of China Southern Airlines, China Northern Airlines and Xinjiang Air as part of the government's effort to restructure China's airline industry. The environmentally conscious airline is striving to lower the carbon impact of their flights, evidenced by their planned purchase of a fleet of more energy efficient and less pollutant air carriers, the A380 Green Giants. China Southern Airlines is also focused on numerous corporate social responsibility programs, including evacuation of Chinese living abroad in disaster zones or countries experiencing political instability as well as tertiary education grants. The airline is a proud supporter of the Asia Olympics and Paralympics. In 1997, China Southern was listed on the Hong Kong and New York Stock Exchanges and in 2004 on the Shanghai Exchange. The government still owns 50% of the company. In 2011, the company added three international routes from Guangzhou to Auckland, Vancouver and Amsterdam. Rising five places with brand growth of 58% is the world's largest residential air conditioning manufacturer, Gurley, in at 27. Gurley is one of the world's largest manufacturers and marketers of air conditioning units, with an annual production capacity of 27 million consumer units and 2 million industrial units. Gurley is a great example of the way in which Chinese companies are beginning to reposition themselves. They talk about themselves as a brand which is a technology innovator whose products are created in China as opposed to made in China. Gurley innovations include advancements in energy savings and noise reduction. In fact, many of its products are made in China, but Gurley also manufactures abroad in Brazil, Pakistan and Vietnam. The brand's message about creating world-class technology products has been delivered recently by its celebrity spokesperson 
actor Jackie Chan. Galiz also gained publicity by winning air conditioning contracts for certain facilities at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Gurley was established in 1991 through an enterprising merger of two businesses in Zhuhai, a southern coastal city of China, known for high-tech industries. With a brand increase of 49%, Yunnan Baiyao climbed one place to 26. Yunnan Baiyao is a Chinese medicine best known for Bai Yao. It's a white powder made from ginseng and other roots which helped stop bleeding. Yunnan Bai Yao was founded in 1902 after the medicinal properties of Bai Yao were discovered in Yunnan province in southwestern China. And it was this man, Chairman Mao, who was so impressed with the brand's performance that he made its formulation a national state secret. In 2005, the company adopted a twin strategy, extending the product range and leveraging the brand. Today, the Bai Yao powder can be found in many products, including face cream bandages and toothpaste. So we've reached the halfway point of the WPP Brandsy Top 50 Most Valuable Chinese Brands. And we've seen how many Chinese brands across lots of sectors have increased their performance in 2012. In the next 15 brands, we'll see another new entrant by a Chinese airline and two dairy brands that have increased their performance significantly. But perhaps the most significant in a country that's the most wired and socially connected in the world is the astonishing performance of Sino Weibo, the social networking site that has increased its brand value by a staggering 200 and 44%. Up 15 places to 25, and with a brand value growth of 244%, the fastest riser is online social media company, Sina. Sina is an online media company, principally known for its Chinese language information and entertainment site. Not only is it attractive to Chinese consumers inside China, but also to Chinese speakers in Taipei, in Hong Kong, and in North America. Sina also launched and owns the immensely popular micro-blogging site Weibo. It also operates in the business of mobile value-added services, offering ringtones, games and other applications. Sina is traded on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. And as an example of how established, valuable Western brands are looking towards Chinese brands, in 2010, Microsoft established an alliance with Sina.com for MSN to integrate their online services. The final new entry coming in at number 24 is the Chinese airline China Eastern. China Eastern Airlines Corporation is one of China's three leading airlines and ranks amongst the 20th in the world in terms of passenger capacity. It operates both domestically and internationally with an emphasis on Australia, Asia and North America.
Established in 1988, the airline grew steadily through a series of acquisitions, culminating in a merger in 2009 with a competitor, Shanghai Airlines, now a China Eastern subsidiary. China Eastern is publicly traded, although the Chinese government owns a majority stake through CEA Holding. The airline joined the Sky Team Alliance in 2011 and that enabled them to increase the number of routes they operate in, their IT infrastructure and customer service. And with an eye to the future, in 2010, the airline purchased a majority stake in Great Wall Airlines. Despite a stable year when its brand value remained unchanged, the success of others means that the world's second largest PC manufacturer, Lenovo, dropped seven places to 23. Lenovo is one of China's leading PC and electronics manufacturers. It started life out as the Legend Group in 1984 and didn't make its first PC until 1990. The Lenovo brand was created in 2003 and in a very audacious acquisition it acquired all of IBM's personal computing division in 2005. Lenovo inherited the IBM ThinkPad notebook, introduced in 1992, and expanded the brand into related products, such as ThinkServer, aimed at small and medium business customers. Today's branding strategy divides the company into the Think Product Group for corporate business and the Idea Group, serving consumers and small businesses. In an effort to grow sales in Europe, Lenovo acquired a majority stake in the German computer marketer Median AG in 2011. Legend Holdings, a state-controlled organisation, owns almost half of Lenovo, which is traded on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The IBM acquisition strengthened the company's ability to understand global markets and react accordingly. Interestingly, it chose not to operate from one global headquarters, but from a number of regional hubs. In response to the world economic downturn, it reorganised the entire company into two divisions, emerging markets and mature markets. Rising One Place is the largest manufacturer of dairy products in China, Yi Li, in at 22. Yi Li is China's largest dairy manufacturer and markets a range of products of well over a thousand. In 2010, it underwent a strategic review and repositioned itself to emphasize its health and nutrition and introduced a new logo. Along with the company's focus on food safety and environmental responsibility, the rebranding in part reflects an ongoing response to the tainted milk scandal of 2008, which touched most brands, including Yi Li. The Yili Industrial Group was established in 1993 from the Huha Howder Muslim Dairy Food General Factory. It was listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 1996. Yili was the dairy sponsor to the 2008 Beijing Olympics and a sponsor of the 2010 Shanghai Expo.
Suning, China's largest consumer electronics retailer, drops three places to 21. Suning is China's leading consumer electronics stores, where the Chinese consumers go to buy everything from washing machines through to mobile phones. It's had a very aggressive expansion strategy over the course of the last couple of years. In 2010 alone, increasing its stores by some 400 stores. Suning has developed a portfolio of stores to compete effectively in China's diverse market. The stores range from the 100,000 square foot Expo Super Flagship stores, with roughly 50,000 SKUs, to the small country stores, which vary considerably in size. Suning began in 1990 when an entrepreneur named Zhang Jingdong opened a small shop selling air conditioning units in Nanjing, where he had attended university. In 2000, Suning began expanding into a chain operation across China. In 2003, Suning revised their corporate strategy to be seen as a 3C retailer, consumer appliances, computers and communications. In 2004, Suning was listed on the Shenzhen Stock Exchange. And recognising the growth of e-commerce in China, Suning has now put significant investment in developing not only an e-commerce capability, but significant distribution facilities around China to become a leading electronics retailer in the e-commerce space. Up two places at 20 is the country's largest and oldest grape winery, Chang'u. Yeah. Chang'u is a leader in the Chinese wine industry, having been established some hundred years ago in Yangtai, a coastal city of eastern China. The company has had critical acclaim for its winemaking skills and its wine heritage. Why don't you pass me your glass? Leveraging this heritage, Shang Wu focuses the brand's image on the more upmarket end of the line, such as its Chateau Alfay, which is grown at the company's European style wine growing estate, and Shang Wu Ice Wine, a dessert wine made from frozen grapes. The company also produces a range of white, reds, brandies and speciality wines and it distributes right across China and also distributes to 20 international markets including important wine drinking countries like France, Germany and Italy. In at number 19 is the China Pacific Insurance Group five places lower than last year. China Pacific is one of China's largest insurers. It has a diversified portfolio of property, life and accident. It has 56 million individual clients and 3.3 million corporate clients. The company maintains a network of 300,000 agents and 5,700 branches. The company recently adopted a customer focus approach that promises greater attention to clients, from insight right through to implementation, with related improvements in infrastructure and branding. China Pacific subsidiaries include China Pacific Property Insurance Company Limited, China Pacific Life Insurance Company Limited. Pacific Asset Management Company Limited and Chan Liang Pension Insurance Company Limited. Mm -hmm. 
China Pacific is growing fast, especially as China's middle classes embrace all forms of insurance. It's trying to increase its cross-selling opportunities by leveraging its scale. China Pacific was founded in 1991, was listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 2007 and on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2009. Growing 66% in brand value and up two places is China's leading manufacturer and distributor of dairy products, Meng Yu. Based in the dairy land of Inner Mongolia, Meng Yu is one of China's leading dairy producers, with production facilities right across China to produce their key products of milk, yogurt, cheese and ice cream. The company is still recovering from the tainted milk scandal of 2008 when its powdered milk was among the products recalled. Meng Yu now promotes the safety of its products, but other dairy producers make similar claims. And some competitors support their safety claims by emphasising their local sourcing. When the chairman of Meng Yu stepped down in the spring of 2011, he was replaced by the chairman of Kofco, China's large food conglomerate, suggesting that the company could benefit from Kofco's supply chain efficiencies. Kofco has a large financial stake in Meng Yu. Meng Yu was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2004. The company gained prominence and sales with a high-profile campaign in the late 1990s and early 2000s when it linked the consumption of dairy products with the strength of the Chinese people. One memorable campaign, Special Milk for Cosmonauts, was launched in order to support their exclusive arrangement with the Chinese space program. At 17 this year, one of China's leading distillers of the traditional Chinese liquor, Baiju, is Wu Liang Yi. Wu Liang Yi is China's leading manufacturer of traditional alcohol based in grain. As well as manufacturing the Wu Liang Yi brand, it also has a range of sub-brands across the liquor market. While driving additional revenue, the multi-brand strategy yields problems of cannibalised sales and uneven quality. At the same time, in response to fierce competition, Wulian Yi is attempting to broaden its brand position from focusing exclusively on liquor, captured in the phrase, China's liquor king, to becoming a brand that stands for an affluent lifestyle across many product categories. The company is based in Yibin, along the Minjiang River, in an area of southwest China known for more than 2,000 years of liquor culture. Wu Liang Yi Group Company Limited was formed from Sichuan Yibin Distillery, China Monopoly Company, which was jointly founded in the early 1950s by several historical distilleries. The Ulyani Group is an industrial conglomerate. It not only distills alcohol, but also manufactures pharmaceuticals, electronics, plastics, and is also involved in logistics. At number 16 is one of China's leading airlines, the 10th largest by fleet size, it's Air China. Air China is one of China's three leading airlines and one of the tenth largest in the world in terms of the routes served. It covers 170 domestic routes, 
69 international ones across 28 countries. It was formed in 1988 when the Chinese government divided the responsibilities of China's aviation authority into competing airlines. Its strength in international derives from its responsibilities given to build intercontinental routes. In 2002, a new Air China was formed by combining with China National Aviation Corporation and China Southwest Airlines. The new company was listed on the Hong Kong and London Stock Exchanges in 2004 and subsequently on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. In recent years, Air China has expanded domestically to better round out its service offering and to provide increased convenience to consumers. Air China became a member of the Star Alliance in 2007 and served as the airline partner of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Air China's philosophy and customer mission is embodied in its Phoenix logo. Derived from the ancient Chinese mythological legend called Shanghai Zhen, where a phoenix from Asia comes across all of the oceans to bring peace and harmony to all destinations. The logo is also an oblique reference to the letters VIP, summing up the company's commitment to customer service for all of its passengers. Up two places to 15 is state-owned telecommunications operator and the world's third biggest mobile provider, China Unicom. China Unicom is one of China's big three telecom providers and has its origin in the fixed line market. But in 2009, the Chinese government, who owns them, granted them a license to operate 3G technology, and it's been developing that ever since. In fact, 3G revenues far exceed now its fixed line business. China Unicom has about 182 million subscribers and has been growing at the rate of about 16% per annum. See, is it good? <laughs> To leverage the convergence of its fixed-line mobile and broadband businesses, China Unicom introduced the Wo brand. The company intends to reach consumers with products branded Wo Family and business customers with products branded Wo Business. China Unicom was incorporated in 2000 and IPO'd in the same year on the Hong Kong and New York Stock Exchange. Now, as an example of how many international companies are looking to China and wanting to share in China brand's growth, Telefonica International have a 9% stake in China Unicom. At number 14, with a brand growth of 23%, is China Merchants Bank. With over 800 locations in 90 cities, China Merchant Bank pretty much concentrates on the domestic market, and especially around the eastern seaboard and large cities. With two subsidiaries in Taipei, the bank has offices in London, in Taipei, and also in New York. It generates about 60% of its revenue from commercial banking and about a third from retail banking and the rest from treasury. China Merchant Bank was the first Chinese joint stock commercial bank to provide private banking services along with other products aimed at wealthy Chinese consumers. In a recent marketing message, we're here just for you, the bank promised to continue providing customers with services that simplify banking. 
established in 1987 in the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, China Merchant Bank was an early example of banking industry reform and the shift to private ownership. It was listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 2002 and on the Hong Kong Exchange in 2006. With more than 57 million people using the China Merchant Bank card, one of the largest in the country. And it's also indicative of the institution's move to offer its customers more innovative solutions, such as telephone banking, internet banking and mobile phone apps. With a brand growth of 58% and in at number 13 is Baoju producer Mao Tai. Mao Tai is a shorgum based liquor which has been produced in China for the last 2,000 years, ever since the Qing dynasty in the 17th century. It's been an integral part of Chinese society and culture ever since. Its rich heritage has deeply rooted the brand in Chinese culture. It also results in the brand's most compelling challenge, seeming contemporary and appealing to younger drinkers. While continuing to emphasize Mao Tai's singular place as China's national drink, the brand recently has tried to broaden its appeal, positioning Mao Tai as green, meaning it is healthy, and also emphasizing its quality as a distilled liquor. In a complicated effort to leverage the brand's strength, the company launched a multi-brand strategy, introducing liquors aimed more at the middle and lower ends of the market. This attempt threatened the distinctive image of Mao Tai and ultimately failed. The liquor enjoys a particular niche outside of China and is distributed worldwide. In 1951, the Chinese government restructured several Mao Tai producers into one single company. This company was restructured in 1997 and listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange in 2001. In at number 12, and an increase of brand value of 15%, is the financial service conglomerate Ping'an. Ping'an is an integrated financial services company operating in the banking, insurance and investment sector. Ping'an started in 1988 in a small sector of China's financial market in property and casualty. Since then it's grown considerably and has customers of more than 60 million across China. It aims to offer its customers an integrated suite of financial products through its three core divisions. The insurance offering includes Pingang Life, Property and Casualty, Annuity, Health and Insurance. Banking needs are served by Pingang Bank and Shenzhen Development Bank, in which Pingang is the largest shareholder. The investment business includes Pingang Trust, Securities and Asset Management, and Pingang UOB Fund, created from a joint venture with United Overseas Bank of Singapore. And as the business grows, Ping Ang is looking at efficiencies and synergies at the back office of the business in systems and processes across its three core divisions. These interconnections are also aimed at enhancing and growing the brand and customer loyalty. And this will help Ping Ang's massive 450,000 employees across 4,500 branches, mainly in central and eastern China, 
develop the business even further. Ping An was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2005 and the Shanghai Exchange in 2007. And just outside the top 10 at number 11 is the state-owned telecommunication company and the operator of the largest fixed-line network, China Telecom. China Telecom is predominantly a state-owned enterprise. It provides Chinese consumers and businesses with fixed line, mobile and internet connections. It operates the world's largest fixed line network, much of it now fiber optic. The company expanded from its core telecom operations to an integrated service provider in 2004. China Telecom operates through two holding companies that were listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 2002 and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2006. And in a shake-up of government policy around mobile, the company in 2009 was authorised with a 3G licence. It now sells this across China's urban cities. So finally, we've reached the top 10 most valuable Chinese brands, with nine brands maintaining their coveted place in the top 10 for the second consecutive year. And one new entrant, Sinopec, the biggest mover rising 37 places. Maintaining its place in the top 10 is the internet portal and website service Tencent. Tencent is China's largest internet portal and it's probably best known for its instant messaging service QQ which it launched in 1999. QQ is probably used by everyone in China who has a mobile phone and everyone connected to the internet. It has some 700 million users. And to give you some kind of scale, that's more users in China than Facebook has worldwide. Recently, the company announced an increase in investment in product development to keep pace with the rapid innovation of China's internet industry. In a major strategic shift, Tencent also announced that it would adopt an open platform business model. In an early example of this new approach, Tencent entered into a partnership with Zynga, the US game maker best known for games like Farmville, that it created for Facebook and Tencent purchased a stake in Elong, China's second largest online travel site. With an estimated 230 million users as of fall 2011, Tencent Weibo quickly surpassed Sina in scale. Although the Tencent fans tend to be younger with less purchasing power and more likely to reside in China's smaller and medium-sized cities. In 2004, Tencent Holdings Limited was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The open platform approach may well be a response to the intense competition in the microblogging space, especially from Weibo. Well, this little penguin has certainly got to the hearts and the minds of Chinese consumers, mm. as every day it helps them navigate the interconnected digital world. Well, with 700 million users, I'm sure I can find someone to send a message to. In at number nine is PetroChina, China's largest oil and gas producer, this year sitting two places lower. 
PetroChina is China's leading producer of oil and gas and one of the nation's largest companies in terms of revenues. As well as exploring for natural gas and crude oil, PetroChina is also involved in all aspects of the petrochemical business, including chemicals and fertilizers. It operates a vast network of pipelines right across China, Russia and Asia to pump oil and gas across China. It operates 26 oil refineries and 13 chemical plants. The company continues to evolve into a leading international energy company, recently with ventures that increase its presence in Australia and Canada, where political and economic stability helps assure continuous supply. The company also has interests in Russia, Venezuela, the Middle East and Central Asia. The company increased communications activities in recent years to include sponsorship of major sporting events. The key challenge remains building brand equity around a strong proposition that will help make such a large, state-owned enterprise more accessible. PetroChina was formed in 1999 from the restructuring of the government enterprise China National Petroleum Corporation, which emerged in 1988 from the Ministry of the Petroleum Industry. China National Petroleum Corporation holds a controlling stake in PetroChina. PetroChina operates 17,000 service stations, which helps increase its brand awareness. In 2000, it was listed on the Hong Kong and New York Stock Exchanges, and in 2007, on the Shanghai Exchange. In at number eight, and the biggest climber in this year's list, up 37 places, is Sinopec. Sinopec is a state-owned petrochemicals company. It operates the largest network of petrol stations across China, many of them now including a convenience store. Sinopec also manufactures a number of petroleum products such as lubricants. It's also actively involved in the upstream part of the petrochemical business in exploration and refinement. Like other national oil companies, Sinopec enjoys high brand awareness because of service stations and substantial media attention, usually about pricing, safety standards and overseas expansion. During the past few years, companies like Sinopec have enhanced brand communication to emphasise how oil companies contribute to society's welfare. They've also embraced major sponsorships, which for Sinopec has included the 2008 Beijing Olympics and Formula One racing. These new sponsorship efforts by Sinopec, often called China Petrochemical Corporation, are aimed at overcoming two brand issues. The first is being government controlled and being seen as part of the monolithic operations of government and the second is about differentiating itself from the competition. Down two places at number seven is China Life, a leading provider of life insurance and annuity products. China Life is the only domestic insurance company that has assets exceeding 1 trillion RMB. It's providing the reassurance and safety and security that these people now need in all aspects of their lives. It is part of China Life Insurance Group, a state-owned organisation that was spun off in 1996 from its predecessor, People's Insurance Company of China, which itself was founded in 1949 
with the establishment of the People's Republic of China. In 2003, China Life was listed on both the New York and Hong Kong exchanges. It was that year's largest IPO. In 2007, China Life was listed on the Shanghai Exchange. The company has been featured on the Fortune 500 global list for nine consecutive years, rising to position 113 in 2011. With businesses including life insurance, property, casualty insurance, pension plans, asset management and industrial investment, China Life and its subsidiaries constitute the largest commercial insurance group in mainland China. The company operates China's most extensive insurance service network with over 700,000 exclusive agents supplemented by a network of other representatives. Up three places from number nine to number six in this year's rankings is the search engine Baidu, with an impressive 67% in brand value. Baidu is China's largest search engine by a long way, and second only to Google worldwide. With Google's exit from the China market in 2010 over censorship issues, this has left Baidu virtually unchallenged. As well as its ubiquity in China, what's also helped the brand is the way in which Baidu has really understood the nuances of the complex Chinese language to enable search requests to be fulfilled significantly better than anyone else. In addition to its search engine, Baidu offers other online knowledge-based products and services, including community platforms, Baidu Postbar and Baidu Knows. The user-created Chinese language Baidu Encyclopedia as well as e-commerce and entertainment applications. As competition for China's booming internet market intensifies, Baidu continues to broaden its offering. During 2011, it announced plans to invest in an online travel site. Baidu also operates a Japanese language site. The company derives revenue from selling advertising and marketing space around relevant content. Baidu literally means hundreds of times and has its origins in an old Chinese poem about a man who spends forever searching for his lover. Baidu was created in 2000 and had an IPO on the Nasdaq exchange in 2005. And perhaps as a testament to how some Chinese brands are now having an influence around the world, especially in the high-tech sector, Baidu was the very first Chinese company to be incorporated in the NASDAQ Top 100 Index. Rising one place to number five is China's third largest lender by assets, Agricultural Bank of China. The Agricultural Bank of China is one of China's leading banks and it has its origins in lending money to farmers in rural areas of China. Now, the bank's developed on since then and now lends money not only to agriculture but also to businesses and industry, but still specialises in developing rural China. Originally state-owned, the bank in 2009 became a joint stock limited liability company. The following year, it completed a tremendously successful IPO, raising over $22 billion and was listed on the Shanghai and Hong Kong stock exchanges. Agricultural Bank of China operates about 31,000 branches and offices throughout China. Aspiring to become a global financial institution, it already has a presence in Hong Kong, Singapore, 
Tokyo, London and New York. The bank is also determined to diversify its portfolio and offer a suite of integrated products. It purchased Jahu Insurance in order to enter the life insurance market and it partnered with Credit Agricole in order to develop fund management. To grow its retail business, its marketing campaigns have emphasised its nationwide network of ATM machines. Dropping by one place is the oldest bank in China. At number four, it's Bank of China. The Bank of China has a long and auspicious history. Established in 1912 with the fall of the Qing dynasty from the Da Qing Bank, under the direction of Dr. Sun Yitzhak's provisional government. The bank served as the nation's exchange bank from 1929 and up until 1949 was the nation's central bank. With the establishment of the People's Republic of China, the bank served as the foreign exchange bank. Well, today, the Bank of China is China's most diverse bank and its most international. Its core business includes corporate banking, personal banking and financial market services. The bank is also in the insurance business. Bank of China expanded its credit card business during 2010 with several innovative card options, especially the Great Wall Card, which the bank positioned as a card that can be used for all transactions. The bank has over 20 million credit cards in circulation. The bank has generally recovered from the impact of the global financial crisis, to which it was especially vulnerable because of its international ambitions. Bank of China became a state-owned commercial bank in 1994 and publicly traded after an IPO in 2006. In its 100th year, the Bank of China today is listed on the Hong Kong and Shanghai Stock Exchange, has more than 10 thousand branches across China and is well represented internationally. Gaining one place to number three is the nation's second largest bank, China Construction Bank. China Construction Bank is one of China's four largest banks. It's traditionally differentiated itself from its competitors by offering industry loans in the gas the construction, the telecommunications and the power sector. This very much has reflected the bank's origins, which started in 1954, set up by the government as the People's Construction Bank to finance the government's economic plan. Well, with the advent of China's booming economy, the bank has widened its portfolio, offering loans to companies, entrepreneurs, businesses and multinationals. The bank is active in corporate and personal banking and treasury operations. It specialises in a category called the Three Rurals, which includes agricultural companies, farmers and residents of rural communities. With 13,600 branches plus, China Construction Bank was formed as a joint stock company in 2002, was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2005 and on the Shanghai Exchange in 2007. Holding its place at number two is the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC. ICBC is China's largest bank in terms of the number of customers, its capitalization and its profitability. 
In 2010, ICBC had a market capitalization of 240 billion US dollars. It offers both professional banking services, corporate banking services, and personal banking. With more than 16,000 branches in China and 203 overseas, ICBC serves over 4 million corporate customers and 259 million personal banking customers. ICBC also handles overseas business through its relationships with more than 1,500 correspondent banks. It also offers extensive online services. When the company was listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange and the Shanghai Stock Exchange in October 2006, it set a record as the world's largest IPO with a value of 21.9 billion US dollars. The listing transformed ICBC from a state-owned commercial bank into a publicly traded company. The Chinese government holds a 70% stake in the bank. In May 2011, ICBC received a license to open a branch in Mumbai and recently opened offices in Karachi, Islamabad and Canada. These initiatives reflect the bank's intention to develop as a major global financial institution. Established in 1984, ICBC has got its eyes firmly set on international development, with branches in Russia, Indonesia, Pakistan and the Middle East. And it's looking to Latin America, with branches in Brazil and in Peru. And at number one, for the second year running, is China Mobile, the world's largest mobile phone operator. China Mobile is the world's largest telecommunication company and the world's largest mobile provider. In a country of 1.3 billion, China Mobile has a staggering 600 million customers. Of course, it uses its scale to help leverage its business, but it's coming under increasing pressure from other mobile operators who want a slice of its 3G customer base. The development of the internet, putting pressure in terms of innovation on both voice and data, is also providing China Mobile, the state-owned company, with a whole series of additional challenges. The company has developed initiatives for both consumer and business customers. To increase its share of consumer wireless data transmission, China Mobile developed an app store it calls Mobile Market. The company is also advancing what it terms the Internet of Things, wireless transmission for commercial use, such as operating transportation systems. China Mobile is trying hard to improve customer services by speeding up in-store transactions and customer bill payments. China Mobile's customer base continues to grow, especially as it develops its network in rural parts of China. So that's completed the WPP Brand Z Top 50 Most Valuable Chinese Brands. Congratulations to all those brands that made the Top 50 in 2012. I'm sure the list in 2013 is going to be just as revealing. Thank you for watching. To find out more how WPP can help you understand the changing Chinese consumer and to help you create and build valuable brands in China, contact me, David Roth.